the difference between self-regulation and self-management. The difference between self-management, which is using all of the resources of the world to be able to manage a brain that hasn't had enough attunement or resonance, and being able to lean into that in internal holding, mm -hmm. that's the difference between self-management and self-regulation. Scientists use this word self-regulation for the capacity of our own brains to kind of in many ways, conjure everyone who has ever loved us and carry them with us within ourselves. Because so self-regulation is, I've, I've, I want to make up a new really good word that's like internalized community support. <laughs> mm. Daniel Siegel developed this and I love it. <laughs> and he, he said, he, our forearm is our spinal column. And it comes up to our the palm, the base of the palm of our hand, which is the brain stem. And the brain stem is sleep and wakefulness and hunger and sati satiation and territoriality and some things with sex and some things with balance and regulating um, just homeostasis, regulating homeostasis. Then we put our thumb across, then that represents the limbic system. And there's a number of very important and interesting organs in the limbic system that have to do with emotion and regulating stress and addiction and making sense of the world and tracking fear and tracking difficult memories and making difficult memories into life experience. I have a friend who says that the work we do takes trauma memories and turns it into life experience, turns them into life experience. Mm. So here's the amygdala and the hippocampus and the hypothalamus and the basal ganglia, lots of stuff in here. But the most important for us right now is the amygdala. Babies are born with the amygdala running the show. The amygdala is broadcasting what's going on with this baby. They don't have words. They're broadcasting it with emotion. With any luck, the caregiver is tracking the baby and going, oh, yes, this cry this cry means the baby's hungry. This cry, oh, the baby must need to be changed. Oh, the baby needs to get attention and care and relationship and play. You know, wouldn't it be nice if our caregivers had the time and the support themselves to be able to track us as babies that way? Every time that a person successfully tracks and responds to us, it creates these, of course, neurons mm. that run between the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala that say, oh, yes, yes, you make sense, baby. Mm. So there's another brain that's providing a prefrontal cortex that understands that baby's amygdala, and that understanding is creating and laying down the tracks for the neural pathways that go between the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala, which is what scientists call self-regulation. It turns out that these, pa these pathways, these neurons, are extremely important for, for decreasing our experience of being in a stressful world. The more we carry an internalized, of courseness, the less stressful the world is. If we didn't have that young attunement, of course, we moved into self-management behaviors, um, all of our adaptations. Yes, we have, an, we have a, an amygdala that's crying and we need to respond to it somehow. So we can respond to it with food. We can respond to it with alcohol. We can respond to it with gambling. We can respond to it with shopping overwork or perfectionism or being the best good girl in the world yeah, and just yeah, holding yeah, ourselves now, to these high standards of now you're starting to move into our contract territory yeah oh the other yeah. thing i want to say before we get into that territory is i really this is something you said in your book and i really want to underline it and maybe I'll... well the wonderful wonderful thing is that this pathway is you know there's a lot of pathways that have to be used in order to be uh, available to us as grown-ups mm. there's what they call critical periods of de career, critical developmental periods mm -hmm. where you have to have input to your eyes in order to be able to have eyes you have to have input to your ears in order to be able to use your hearing organs you have to have input uh uh in in order to be of language in order to be able to speak and you know they're critical periods for receiving input mm -hmm. but happily with the tract of attachment this is the most neuroplastic part of the brain it remains the most neuroplastic for the whole of our lives 
Yay! <laughs> so we can That's be, really you know, good. stumbling through, you know, for the first 40 years, making it with chocolate and some scotch, you know, and, and some good sex every now and then. And then we can hit 40 and we can go, oh my God, life could be better. We could, st- and we can start to integrate mm. a warm communi- community that then becomes those neurons. Mm. Doesn't matter what age we are, somebody else's brain can always help our brain to create those neurons between, uh, between prefrontal cortex and amygdala. And as your previous speaker said, and you know, this is what I hope so much with the books that I write, that they, that they reach people and um, substitute for unreliable, (laughs) unreliable humans. Mm. 